Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. Today we're going to work on our ruler so we can do our measurement module and you're going to make this as a little project in modeling. We're going to learn quite a bit about using the uh, linear feature function in SOLIDWORKS and also a little bit about uh, thin cuts, what are called thin extrudes or non-closed body cuts. So first let's look at a typical ruler and this is the ruler you're going to make. I'll zoom out just a little bit on a drawing of the actual part that I've made. So the ruler itself is 6 inches by 1 inch. It's made out of uh, 1 8 inch or 0.125 inch cast acrylic plastic. So we'll cut this on our laser cutter. That's accurate, uh, very accurate, uh, down to about 0.2 millimeters in, in line width. So we're going to go ahead and do these little lines as a series of cuts. Now you'll notice I can either look at it from the top view here uh, or, or facing up so that I'm measuring in inches or I can look at it down below here and I can measure using uh, centimeters. It'll be a 15 centimeter ruler and then it will have divisions of one millimeter along uh, the, uh, the uh, centimeter axis. Down below on the inch axis we'll use 1 8 inch increments, uh, sorry, 16th inch increments as we move along and we'll label them 1 8th, 1 4th, 3 8 1 half to help you when you do your measurements. So with that said, let's start out by making the rectangle that forms our ruler. So you have SolidWorks up by this time. If you don't, pause the video and get it started. I'm going to go File, New, Part using our Westwood Engineering template. This will bring me up in inch pound seconds down here, which is fine by me. Let's start out by extruding a boss base. It asks me what, what, uh, what plane do I want to draw on. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose top by hovering above the word top and clicking the edge. From here, I'll choose a center rectangle, highlight that, drop my center rectangle. It has two dots, so you'll see the first ones to drop it, the second ones to pull it out. Apply the smart dimensions that we mentioned, six inches, always dimensioning that largest dimension first to keep it scaled by one inch. I can exit that sketch. It's going to take me right to my extrusion and you'll notice here's where I'll put in 0.125 inches. You can extrude it blind up. It's fine. It doesn't really matter what direction. So now I have my basic ruler and I'm going to go ahead and start to sketch my centimeter markings on that basic ruler face. So looking right here where my cursor is flashing, you'll notice that I've got four millimeter ticks and then a five millimeter tick that's longer, four more short, and then a one centimeter tick, which is longer yet. That pattern will repeat. So we see a couple different pattern repetitions. So let's go in and start sketching on the surface where we're going to cut this. Now the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to come down here to the IPS section. Let's change that to millimeters. Make it a lot easier to navigate our measurements. Once we're in millimeters, let's start a sketch by going sketch tab, sketch button, select the surface to sketch on. I'm going to start out just with a very simple line tool. Come down here, zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to drop it, get the coincident glyph with the top edge of my ruler, pull it straight down, get a horizontal glyph, select it. I'm going to give this the dimension of 3 millimeters long and obviously 1 millimeter from that edge. That makes perfect sense. So that's my 1 millimeter mark. And then I'm going to exit that sketch. So now I've got this first line down here, this first sketch. I'll highlight the sketch and then let's cut that. And we want to cut it so that I actually have got like a, you know, some kind of tactile feel to that measurement. Uh, and that'll allow us to laser cut it. So I want to select extruded cut. And I'm going to cut from the sketch plane blind, but the distance that I want to cut down here is uh, very, very thin. I want to make it 0.3 millimeters deep. And then down below here, I want to select thin feature. And that just means cut a non-closed body. 
So select my thin feature, and instead of a giant cut, I'm going to do a mid-plane, making that 0.1 millimeters. And I can just type in 0.1. Now when I zoom in, you'll see it's just going to do a tiny little cut, just like that. Kind of what I want on my ruler, these little perforations. So when you've got that 0.3 millimeters deep, blind, thin feature, and I am mid-plane 0.1 millimeters. Hit the check mark. There it makes my little notch. So that's my one millimeter uh, tick mark. If I come back and look at my drawing, what you're going to pretty plainly see is I need to repeat that. So let's repeat that so that I have a total of one, two, three, four of these in a row. So the way we repeat things in SolidWorks is we repeat features, or we try to. Uh, we can do this in sketches, and you'll learn why we don't do that very often later on. But we can repeat features, and that's called a pattern. Right up here on your Feature tab, you'll see Linear Pattern. If you click the drop down here, this is also where we have things like mirror, circular pattern, curve driven pattern, table driven pattern, lots of different things. We're going to use linear pattern a lot and circular pattern a lot. So let's choose linear pattern and talk about it. When you choose linear pattern, you get this menu pop up and it's really asking you a few basic questions saying, hey, I want to pattern something in a grid. So I need to know the X direction of my grid, the Y direction, or the first direction and second. It doesn't really matter if they're X and Y. But for us, we'll use X and Y. And then how I want to do this, number of intervals and the spacing, or up to an edge and the spacing. So you'll see that I'm going to use spacing and instances. And let's start out and nominate a direction. So I click on the direction one, and then I'm going to choose this edge. So that means the direction I'm going to run along. I'm going to do my spacing at one millimeter. <clears throat> and I want to do four repeats. My second direction is down along the axis here, and I'm only going to do one of them, so I don't care about the spacing. Now the features, I could try and pick my cut off of my view. It's much easier to do it off of the Feature Manager design tree here by clicking the drop down, coming down to the feature, which is my thin extrude. You'll notice it highlights and then selecting it. And look what happens. It pops up right away with what it thinks the features are going to look like. And that's down here if you do partial preview or full preview. I'm going to recommend you do a full preview when you first start this. So pretty neat. So what I did again, I selected the top as my first surface. I do want, I want to do a repeat of four at one millimeter spacing and then I only want to do one pattern in the Y direction here of my cut extrude. Accept it. Look at that. Cuts that pattern out perfect. Well now let's put in our five millimeter mark. So again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a sketch on my surface, zoom back in, grab my line tool, coincident glyph, pull it down. This one we're going to dimension at 5 millimeters and cleverly 5 millimeters away from the edge. Exit that sketch, go to my features, cut it. Thin feature, 0.3 millimeters deep, one, uh, mid plane, 0.1 millimeters, and I've got it selected. Accept it, and I've done my cut. That's pretty neat. Now I could sketch in and cut my next four 1 millimeter marks, but I already did that. Look at this pattern. Let's repeat this pattern. So again, I can come up to my linear pattern. And sometimes you got to think about how you're going to do this. And look for patterns and look for consistency because it really makes your modeling much easier to make initially and also to modify. So I choose my linear pattern. And the direction, first direction I'm going to go is along the top. 
second direction is going to be along the bottom but this time hey I only want to make two instances of this and I really want to put them about five centimeters apart don't I oh look at that now my next four show up looks pretty good now again I can choose linear pattern right here and I use the preview full preview accept it now I'm all the way out to making my 10 millimeter tick mark so let's make that next sketch sketch button surface zoom in line tool coincident pull it down smart dimension uh, this one we're gonna make it 7.5 millimeters long otherwise it gets too long it gets in the way of the writing later on and again 10 millimeters from the edge exit my sketch go to my features do an extruded cut again 0.3 millimeters deep thin feature is selected mid plane 0.1 accept it wow pretty neat so now all we got to do is do that repeat huh so let's look at how many times we'd have to repeat so we'd have to repeat this first four so that first linear pattern my my uh, five millimeter mark then the second linear pattern and my 10 millimeter mark and if I did those repeated all of those 15 times that'd be great but now let's think about this my second repeat of the one millimeter ticks included my first set didn't it so I have three things to select so let's go ahead and choose our linear pattern we're going to go along the top edge we're going to space it at 10 millimeters for 15 times and my left edge eh, we're only going to do it one time now let's clear this and let's look at what we should pick let's start out by picking that one centimeter mark hey look at that that gives us all of our centimeter tick marks doesn't it now let's choose our linear pattern too. Wow, that gives me all of my individual centimeter marks up to four. I'm missing my five, and that was my cut extrude two. And there it is. I've got all 15 of my marks. Hit my check mark to accept it. And at this stage, you've got all the markings, none of the lettering yet. So let's save this file. Save as. And I'm going to go ahead down to my fourth R period. If you don't have a 3.0 ruler folder built, do that. And I'm going to call this 3.0 ruler. And save it. We'll come back. We'll do the other side here in just a moment. Thanks for watching.